the... I felt the impact from the sandstorm, but it is very limited. We don't see this sandstorm too often. China has cracked the code against desert encroachment. The northern and northwestern regions of China were once plagued with a terrible onslaught of desertification, which resulted in devastating floods and the loss of precious farmlands, vital vegetation, and even homes. The silver lining is that the intense desertification is now a thing of the past, as there has been a notable 70% survival rate of planted materials and 40% restoration of vegetation, thanks to a strategic blend of innovative techniques deployed by scientists to combat this formidable threat to economic stability and sustainable progress. How did they triumph? What ingenious methods were employed? Join us on a trip to a land with the world's second largest economy to discover the intriguing tale of resilience and ingenuity. Did you know that deserts engulf 27% of China's territory? That's right, almost a quarter of this incredible country is covered in sand and emptiness. Suppose we focus on the western half of China. In that case, we will see some of the most formidable deserts on Earth, starting from the Taklamakan Desert and the Gobi Desert, which command this region, painting it in hues of golden sand and endless horizons. These deserts, like the Tarim Basin and the Taklamakan Desert, rank among our planet's driest and most desolate places. But amidst the desert expanse, there are remarkable wonders like the third largest desert in China, the Badain Jaran Desert, characterized by its gigantic dunes. And then there's the crown jewel of China's desert empire, the Gobi Desert, an expansive desert and semi-desert region in Central Asia, extending across Mongolia and China. The name Gobi originates from the Mongolian word Gobi, which means waterless place. It's the sixth largest desert in the world, covering about 500,000 square miles. Just so we have a better picture of the remarkable Gobi, let's paint a vivid picture of its unique characteristics and geographical features. Unlike what you might imagine, the Gobi is not predominantly a sandy desert. Instead, it is a breathtaking landscape of bare rock, with a firm and often rocky terrain adorned with gravel and sparse vegetation. This means that you can journey across the desert surface for long distances in any direction without being swallowed by towering dunes. The Gobi stretches 1,000 miles, 1,600 kilometers, from southwest to northeast, and 500 miles, 800 kilometers, from north to south. Its widest point lies in the west, where Lake Boston and Lop Noor meet, along the line joining 87 degree, 89 degree east, resting on a plateau around 2,990 to 4,990 feet, 910 to 1,520 meters, above sea level. The Gobi experiences lower temperatures due to its elevated position. Now let's explore the captivating ecosystem and vegetation that thrive within the Gobi. Here, you'll encounter a unique blend of true desert, desert grasslands, and steppe. Scholars recognize five distinct eco-regions within the Gobi, including the Eastern Gobi Desert Steppe and the Inner Mongolian Desert Steppe. Amidst this remarkable desert, you'll stumble upon a variety of flora, including the resilient saxol tree, elm tree, poplar tree, saltwort, wild onions, desert shrubbery, bulbous plants, wild leek, and grasses. The Gobi occupies a vast arc of land, nestled between the majestic Altai Mountains and Hangain Mountains to the north and the western edge of the Dahingan, Greater Kingan, range to the east. What happened to the Gobi Desert? Sadly, over the years, the Gobi Desert began to change. The desert could be seen expanding and losing its vegetation as the years passed. Each year, 3,600 square kilometers of precious grassland fell victim to the relentless advance of the desert. It was a heartbreaking sight, as the once lush and vibrant meadows succumbed to the relentless forces of nature. As if that wasn't enough, dust storms began to haunt the land increasingly frequently. These storms happen a lot, sometimes three to ten times a month, destroying crops and damaging buildings and roads. But it is not just the crops that suffer. The sandstorms also took their toll on the fragile infrastructure of the Gobi. It got so bad that the residents could see their houses and roads get destroyed right before their eyes, leaving them with the choice to either stay and keep fighting for their precious land, or leave and go to the cities where life might be easier. Yes, they suffered, but what if you were told they had a role in the deteriorating desertification? 
People sought to claim their piece of the Gobi as the population grew. They flocked to the desert, planting trees in the natural dunes, hoping to tame the wild landscape. Little did they know that their actions would have unintended consequences. The trees, thirsty for water, began to drain the soil of its precious moisture. The groundwater table, once a lifeline for the delicate balance of the ecosystem, plummeted to dangerous lows, and before we would know it, the desert, short of water, seized the opportunity and expanded its territory, inch by inch. As the Gobi Desert succumbed to the forces of desertification, the dreams of those who sought to conquer the desert turned to dust. Apart from the Gobi Desert, Lingwu County, nestled on the edge of the mighty Mao Wusu Desert in China, also faced the challenge of desert encroachment. Lingwu County receives a mere 160 millimeters of rainfall each year, which is insignificant compared to the evaporation rate of over 2,000 millimeters. This imbalance between rainfall and evaporation is causing trouble because the moment raindrops touch the earth, they start disappearing into thin air. To make matters worse, the sun's rays scorch the ground, and the little moisture left behind evaporates, leaving the land even drier. With this reduced soil moisture, plants struggle to survive. They wither and fade away, making the once lush vegetation a memory. To further aggravate the already ugly situation, Lingwu County faces another threat. As the winds blow across the Maowusu Desert, they carry tiny particles of sand towards the nearby Yellow River, raising the riverbed and putting the landscape at a high flood risk. What efforts were put into curbing the desertification? China was challenged with. Alas, redemption came for Northwest China as the relentless expansion of the Gobi Desert, which has posed a significant challenge for decades, has received fresh air. Talking about the Great Green Wall project. The Great Green Wall is a remarkable project that seeks to combat desertification by planting trees. It's a simple yet powerful idea that is key to transforming the Gobi Desert from a wasteland to a thriving oasis. But it's not just about the environment. The Great Green Wall promises economic prosperity and social development. This African-led initiative, launched in 2007 by the African Union, aims to tackle desertification, improve soil fertility, and promote sustainable land use practices in the Sahel region by planting trees and other vegetation to create a wall of greenery. The goals of the Great Green Wall are as ambitious as they are inspiring. The initiative aims to restore 100 million hectares of degraded land, set apart 250 million tons of carbon, and create 10 million green jobs by 2030. It's a bold commitment to address various challenges, from climate change and food security to migration and resource-driven conflicts. Aside from the Great Green Wall Project, the World Bank's Ningxia Desertification Control and Ecological Protection Project has also come on board to save the day and the landscape from desert encroachment. With its grand vision, this project also aims to combat desertification head-on, rehabilitate natural vegetation, and introduce effective measures to protect the environment. It's an initiative to address the historical challenge of desert encroachment in the Ningxia Hue Autonomous Region. This is the World Bank's way of lending support and recognizing the urgency and importance of the cause. Since 2012, the project has been making impressive strides in the battle against desertification. It focuses on seven counties and cities in Ningxia, where the problem is most severe. For this course, the World Bank has approved a loan of 80 million US dollars to aid in the fight against desertification and land degradation in this region. With this financial backing, the project has implemented various activities that yield remarkable results. One of the project's key achievements is the restoration of vegetation. By carefully planting trees and shrubs, the project has stabilized dunes and prevented further desertification. Thankfully, the survival rate of these planted materials stands at an astounding 70%. In comparison, the project has successfully restored vegetation cover to 40%, effectively stopping the relentless shifting of dunes. The project's impacts extend beyond vegetation restoration. It has brought approximately 6,667 hectares of the desert under control, a significant feat in itself. Moreover, it has protected more than 21,333 hectares of desert, ensuring the preservation of sensitive ecosystems. But how does the World Bank manage to achieve these incredible results? 
afforestation, planting trees and shrubs was crucial in stabilizing the sand dunes and thwarting desertification. Grassland restoration was another vital component, as it involved improving the quality of grasslands and reducing overgrazing. Water conservation measures, such as the construction of small-scale facilities like check dams and reservoirs, were also implemented to enhance water availability and combat soil erosion. Additionally, soil conservation techniques like terracing and contour plowing were employed to reduce erosion and maintain healthy soil conditions. The project doesn't stop at the technical aspects of combating desertification. It recognizes the importance of engaging local organizations and communities in its implementation. Community-based organizations are established to manage natural resources and promote sustainable land use practices. Farmers and herders, who play a significant role in land management, are provided with support and guidance to improve grassland quality and reduce overgrazing. As a result, the project creates a sense of ownership and responsibility among the local communities, ensuring the sustainability of the implemented measures. The World Bank-funded project in Ningxia has made significant progress in combating desertification and has had a profound impact on the region's development. By creating a barrier against encroaching deserts, the project has safeguarded key infrastructure, including railways and highways. This, in turn, has stimulated the growth of a thriving tourist industry breathing new life into the region's economy. Then there is the Shan Shui initiative brought about by the Shan Shui Conservation Center, a non-governmental organization in China that aims to restore 10 million hectares of natural spaces, including forests, grasslands, and waterways, ensuring that these precious habitats thrive again. It encompasses 75 large-scale projects, covering everything from towering mountains to serene coastal estuaries. China has set an ambitious timeline for the initiative. Between 2021 and 2030, the country aims to complete 50 projects spanning 700 counties. This massive undertaking is expected to create more than 3.2 million jobs, providing opportunities in various industries. The Shan Shui Initiative is a collaborative effort, with the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Ministry of Finance of the People's Republic of China taking the lead. These government bodies coordinate the initiative's activities ensuring that resources are allocated efficiently and projects are implemented effectively. Additionally, the initiative receives support from esteemed organizations such as the World Bank, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, and the German Development Agency. Their expertise and resources further strengthen the initiative's impact and reach. The significance of the Shan Shui Initiative has been acknowledged on a global scale. It has been recognized as a World Restoration Flagship by the United Nations. This prestigious designation honors the world's 10 most groundbreaking restoration projects. Another key approach China employs towards the desertification course is the 1 plus 4 approach, which is like a secret recipe for restoring vegetation and controlling desertification. This approach results from six decades of experience and a deep understanding of the local environment. It involves four steps, each crucial in the battle against desertification. First, the right species of plants are carefully selected. These plants are tough, resilient, and capable of surviving with limited water and nutrients. Once the plants have been chosen, the soil is prepared for their arrival. After that, the soil is loosened and nourished with organic matter, making it fertile and capable of retaining water. This creates the perfect foundation for the plants to thrive. With the stage set, it's time for the plants to be placed, maximizing their chances of survival. But the battle doesn't end there. The planted vegetation needs ongoing care and protection from pests, diseases, and other threats are kept at bay to ensure that the plants can continue to grow and create a green oasis in the desert. This one plus four approach has yielded remarkable results in Lingwu County and other regions of China as vegetation cover has been restored to an impressive 40% effectively halting the relentless shifting of dunes. The survival rate of the planted materials reaches a staggering 70%, showing the resilience of these specially selected plants. Yanchi County has also witnessed a transformation in the fight against desertification. Here, straw checkerboards and grazing bands have played a crucial role. Like a patchwork quilt, straw checkerboards have been laid on the sand dunes. These checkerboards retain moisture in the soil and protect the newly planted vegetation from the forces of wind and sand. They act as a shield, 
allowing the plants to take root and grow undisturbed. A grazing ban was implemented to further aid in the battle against desertification. Overgrazing, a primary cause of land degradation, was curbed with this. Farmers received support in the form of subsidies for sheep sheds and benefited from improved infrastructure. Information campaigns were carried out to raise awareness among farmers about the importance of keeping their sheep away from degraded land. The combined efforts of straw checkerboards and grazing bands have yielded positive outcomes in Yanchi County. Vegetation cover has been restored and the shifting dunes have been tamed. Forest cover has increased and the number of dusty days has decreased, bringing relief to the people and the land. To add to all the amazing control measures, the use of nanoclay was brought on board. Nanoclay is a concoction of clay, water, and local soils. When sprayed onto the desert sands, it works wonders, creating a snowflake-like formation around each sand particle, increasing the surface area, and allowing water and nutrients to cling to the sand rather than being lost as runoff. And the best part is that the nanoclay solution has been tested in various countries, including China, with promising results. In regions such as Inner Mongolia and Xinjiang, where desertification poses a significant threat, applying nanoclay has increased vegetation cover and improved soil quality. The arid lands are gradually being transformed into green landscapes brimming with life. Then there is the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. This ambitious initiative, also known as the One Belt, One Road, OBOR initiative, is a game-changer in the battle against desertification launched by President Xi Jinping of China in 2013. The BRI is not just about infrastructure development. It is a comprehensive strategy to invest in over 150 countries and international organizations. It promotes economic growth and development across vast regions, including the Asia-Pacific, Africa, and Central and Eastern Europe. This visionary initiative forms a central component of China's foreign policy. It showcases its commitment to being a major global player. The Sand Prevention and Control Project takes center stage within the BRI framework. This project is specifically designed to prevent and control desertification in China. It encompasses a range of measures, such as developing sand control technologies, establishing sand prevention and control systems, and promoting ecological restoration. By leveraging the resources and expertise of the BRI, China is making significant strides in reducing desertification. The project targets key areas, particularly the northwestern and northeastern regions, where desertification poses a significant threat. It brings hope to these regions, offering solutions and a path towards sustainable development. In an exciting breakthrough, Chinese researchers at Chongqing Jiao Tong University have discovered a remarkable solution to combat desertification and transform barren deserts into fertile lands. They called it the Omnidirectional Integrative Constraint, ODI. This innovative technology involves a special paste created from plant cellulose, so the paste is being mixed with sand and applied to the desert surface, working its magic. Once that is fine, the once lifeless sand gains the incredible properties of rich, nourishing soil. It becomes a haven for plant growth, retaining water, nutrients, air, and essential microorganisms. The impact of this technology is tremendous. Deserts once devoid of life are now being transformed into arable lands. Because of its effectiveness, this groundbreaking solution has spread beyond China's borders. Other countries, like Dubai, have also embraced this technology to sustain life on Earth and even prepare for future colonization on Mars. With each measure taken, we take a step closer to a world where desertification is no longer a threat, but a challenge conquered. The journey continues, and the excitement builds as we witness the power of nature's revival and human ingenuity. Together, we can create a world where deserts bloom, and the sands of time are no longer a symbol of loss, but a reminder of our triumph over adversity. China's remarkable achievements in combating desertification have transformed their landscapes and ignited a global movement. From Africa to Chile and Pakistan, countries are inspired to take action and collaborate with China to combat land degradation and desertification. Let's take a closer look at some of these inspiring examples. China's efforts have served as a beacon of hope in Africa, where land degradation is a pressing issue due to human activities and climate shocks. Experts have recognized China's achievements 
as an inspiration for African countries battling land degradation. They are now seeking collaboration with China to combat desertification, understanding the importance of joint efforts in this global challenge. Chile, too, has taken decisive steps to fight desertification. They have implemented measures such as using drought-resistant crops, adopting sustainable land management practices, and restoring degraded land. Working with international partners, including China, Chile aims to promote sustainable land use practices, which will help combat desertification worldwide. The exchange of knowledge and expertise between China and Chile is a testament to the collaborative spirit in addressing this shared concern. Pakistan has also joined the fight against desertification. They are implementing various measures, such as land restoration, promoting sustainable land use practices, and enacting policies to prevent land degradation. In their quest to combat desertification, China's ingenuity has gotten the attention and recognition of bodies like the UNEP. How they moved from such an unpleasant situation to being on the global stage as a beacon of hope for others facing the same challenge is both applaudable and intriguing. We hope that in the future, more regions faced with this challenge will partner with China to fight it. Have you come across a region that was once faced with desertification? How did they combat it? Share your experiences in the comment section below, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more.